to say to us today. Let us hear what the Lord has to say. Because when the Lord speaks to us, he speaks peace to all his people. He speaks peace to all his sin. So today, let us open our heart and our mind to what the Lord has to say today. Today, let us just surrender our heart and our mind to feel the peace of Jesus in our life. As we listen to what the Lord has to say today. I'm opening up right now for the word of God to speak to us. For the word of God should change us. So now when we listen to what the Lord has to say, we are going to use the book of 1 John, 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, and we are going to be reading from verses 28, and then we're going to move straight over to chapter 3, verses 10. And using the book from the Bible, we are also version is the New Living Translation. 1 John Chapter 2, verses 28 to 3, verses 10. That's our scripture. Amen? Now let us read and it will be on the screen for you to follow along with me. And now, dear children, remain in fellowship with Christ, so that when he returns, you will be full of courage and not shrink back from him in shame. Since we know that Christ is righteous, we also know that all who do not do right, all who do what is right, are children of God. See how much our Father loved us, for he called us his children, and that is what we are. But the children who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. Dear friend, we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him for we will see him as he really is. And all who have eager expectation will tell themselves, will keep themselves pure, just as he is pure. Everyone who sin is breaking God's law. This is verse 4. For all sin is contrary to the law of God. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sin. And there is no sin in him. Anyone who continues to sin, continue to live in sin, in him will not sin. But anyone who keep on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. Chapter verse 7. Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil, who had been sinning from the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the work of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us now go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, I stand before you this morning surrendering myself to you. Asking that you speak to me with the power of your Holy Spirit to reach your people today. Now that you remove myself from the equation so your people will be blessed with the peace of your word. I ask so, Father God, that you open our ears and our hearts to receive the word that you have for us today. And so that we continue to 
be victorious over the devil by transforming our life to what message you have given to us. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that every person who is watching today will feel the power of your Holy Spirit in the midst of their presence. That no matter where they are, they can feel your power and your might over them. So they can receive the message into the arrival by the power of the Holy Spirit that you have given to them. Father, I pray this morning in the name of your son Jesus Christ that you would allow his soul to be saved. And that the kingdom of heaven gate will be open for another soul to come in today. May your power and your might pour it out into the world today, O oh Lord. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we bring honor and glory to your name. Let us feel your presence around us this morning, Lord. To remember and to accept that you alone are God. And we bring honor and glory to your name of your son, Jesus Christ. May we hear your message and accept it today. And with a desire to be transformed into the person you want us to be. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. This morning, I would like to use the word of God that we have just read to talk to you and to tell you to be like Christ. Be like Christ. Amen? Recently, I found out that there are three type of believer. Previously, I thought it was only two. But recently, I found out that there are three type of believers. There are believers, there are Christians, and then there are disciples. The believers are those who just believe in God and Jesus. They would show up at church maybe once or twice a year. But they understand the importance of God into the world. But they are just believers. The Christians are those who take a step up from believer and decided to serve into the ministry of God. They come to church regularly, give their offering on their time, and provide service to the people in the community and in the church. Those are Christians. But then when we go up a little bit above the ladder, we have the disciples. Now the disciples are both believers and Christians, but they take a little bit of an advanced step and do more than that. The disciples are those who decide to give up themselves and follow Christ so they can be like Christ. So today, if we look at the three different type of people into the household of faith, then we have to remember something, that regardless of the label that you choose to use for yourself, those who give yourself away is used by God. Since God is transforming us to be more like his son, Jesus Christ, then we must be willing to remain in him. This morning, as we think about those three types of people in the household of faith, I want to use the scripture in verses 2, same scripture, verses 28 to 29, to tell you this first thing. When we remain in Christ, we will have no shame. When we remain in Christ, we will have no shame. Here in the scripture, I want you to recognize something. Is called children of God, and everyone, believers, Christian, and disciple will come before the presence of Jesus. But this scripture tells us today that only those who are in fellowship with Jesus Christ will have no shame when they stand before Christ in those days. So, how do we remain in Christ when we are going to fellowship with Him? It's up to us. So, let me ask you to think about this. Are you a believer, a Christian, or a disciple? The choice is yours. But what does it mean to have no shame? It doesn't mean the same shame that we talked to today when we have low self-esteem or somebody hurt your feelings. The shame that we are talking about here is what the whole world will see when we all come before God thrown into the hand and he is speaking to us. Now he can look at us and say, my child, you have done well and fought in my order. Or he can look at us up and say, God, sit over there. You're in time out. The choice is yours. But the one who follow Christ and do the right thing will have no shame. So I want to 
want you to think of that. Which one of those stack clattered a believer, the Christian, or a disciple? Well, I have no shame. The title you earn depend on your relationship with Christ. I was working on my laptop this past week. So I was in the basement because my office is in the basement. So while working on my laptop, I decided to go up to my bedroom to the comfort of my bed and work from there. While I was up there working, I just took my laptop with me. Nobody walk around with a laptop in their church, all right? So I'm in the bedroom working for a few hours, and then my, my laptop gave me this notification that it's moving to power-saving mode, battery-saving mode. So that means the battery is almost over. But I didn't want to get up and go downstairs when that notification come on. So I said, I have a couple more minutes. So I'm going to keep going until it gives me another notification. But I didn't get a second notification. Instead, right as I'm working, the laptop just lost its power. And I lost my work. I was shocked that the power went out so quickly. I'm like, you they just gave me a notification a couple of minutes ago. Now I have to go downstairs, get the power cord to plug into the laptop. Now, once I plug it in, I can start working all over again. When we don't plug into Jesus, then the power that he gives us is temporary. And just like oh, every laptop of your different ability, you have laptop that can charge and last for four hours. Then you have a laptop that can charge and last for six hours. But when you stay in the center and the reason where that laptop is, it's easy for you to plug into it when you are not far away from the charger. But when we don't stay plugged into Jesus or stay close to him, then the time is going to come that we lose our power. The time is going to come that we lose our stand. The time is going to come that we need Jesus, but we are nowhere near him. So in order for us to remain fully in the power of the life that God has given to us, we must remain in Jesus. Romans 15 verses 4 said, Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit. It is severe from the vine. Any of you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in Christ. The second thing I want to use this Bible to tell us in verses 3, verses 1 to 2, is that not only we will not be ashamed when we remain in Christ, but when we remain in Christ Jesus, we become like him. God loves us so much, it's amazing. He sent his son to die for our sin. Now we are given an opportunity to be called children of God. A title that was only given to certain people in biblical time. But today we get an opportunity to be called children of God. Where we adopted into God's family through his son, Jesus Christ. So now everyone has an opportunity to become children of God. Regardless of if you are a believer, a Christian, or a disciple. We are all children of God. But let me tell you something. Once you walk into the family of faith and become a children of God, then the world is not going to be the same for you. You see, the world will always be in conflict with who we, not because of who we are, but because of whose we are. The world recognizes all. Just like Christ recognizes home. So if you are assimilated well into this world where people are praising you, if you are assimilated so well into the world that you're getting along well with the world, then you have to evaluate if you belong to Christ or if you belong to the world. While we are living on earth as children of God, we are earthly children of God. But the day is coming when Christ return and we will be heavenly children of God. But Christ said, blessed are those with a poor in heart, because they will see God. In order for us to have a pure heart so we can see God, we must remain in Christ Jesus. And then we will become like him. When we become like Christ, then it's easy for us to stand before God our maker. See, God loves all of us individually as his children, but he wants all of us to be just like his son, Jesus Christ. So we continue to transform us into the likeness of his son. If we allow him to. The third point I want to make from a scripture today in verses 3-3, three, three, 
It said, when we remain in Christ, our heart becomes pure. When we remain in Christ, our heart becomes poor. The Bible tells us in verse 3, it said, to have eager expectation so that our heart will be remain poor. You see, when our heart is poor, it gives us an opportunity to not only be like Christ, but to accept the blessing that God has poured on upon us. Because a pure heart not only see God, but it also separates us from the world. But the Bible said, with eager expectation, Again, I'm, I'm talking about verses three, three. It said, and all who have eager expectation will keep themselves poor, just like he is pure. When we have eager expectation, we act differently. So for example, if we expect that Christ is gonna show up today or step into the door today, we act differently. Our expectation is what change our action. So if somebody tell you what's your job, you're going to get a bonus. You're going to expect that bonus when you're doing more work. So most likely when you go to work, your action is going to be different. So your expectation is different. When you expect that Christ is going to return, then you will live your life in a different way. The Bible tells us in Revelation 22, verses 12. Revelation 22, verses 12. It said, look. I'm coming soon. Bring in my reward with me to repay all people according to their deed. All people. So not just the believers, the Christian, and the disciple. But which one of those do you think what Christ will give the most reward to? Which one of these people do you think will get the most reward? The believer? A Christian or a disciple, regardless of the person that you think, then I want to invite you to be a disciple because being a disciple is the highest level that you can have in Christ Jesus because it's allow you to seek more than just serving, it's allow you to have a life where you be like Christ. So, how do we live in expectation waiting for Christ to return? There are several things that we can do. The first thing we want to do is anticipate Jesus coming each and every day. When we wake up, expect that Christ is going to come and you're going to ask yourself, how do you want me to find you? How do you want Christ to find you in that situation? Growing up as a child, I'm used to the idea of cleaning our house on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, I have my house spotless and clean because I feel as like if Christ should return on Christmas Day, or if he should just unexpectedly show up and say, I'm going to have some dinner with, G with Sarita today. I want my house to be ready for him to come. I want him to feel welcome into my house. I don't want any dirt into any corner when Jesus comes into my house. Everything must be nice, clean, and smelling nice. That's the only reason why I keep my house clean, is preparing for Jesus to come in. Now, the same way that I keep my house clean, for you to live with expectation of Jesus, you must keep your body clean. Why? Because your body is a temple of God. And that's where he wants you to use a preparation when you expect him to show up. So we keep our body, our temple, our mind, and our heart clean. We keep our temple clean and pure. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6 verses 19, it said, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was not given to you and was given to you by God. So you don't belong to yourself. So you live in eager expectation by keeping your temple pure. Not falling up with sexual immortality, not falling up with gluttony. But live it to a way that when Christ show up, your body and your mind and your heart will be ready for him. So the first thing as we do is keep our temple pure. The second thing we do is keep our mind pure. Romans 12 verses 2 tell us not to conform to this world, but to renew our mind daily. How do we renew our mind is to change the way we think. We don't think like the world, but we think like Christ. How do we think like Christ is that we allow this word to be into our mind. So the first thing that we wake up in the morning, we should go to the word of God. That's how we fill our mind with Christ's word. 
inside your bed to get up and read right away. I have an habit of when I wake up and I recite the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. And I walk through my bed wherever I'm going with reciting that song. So you constantly fill your mind with God's word by reading his word, meditating upon his word. And the first thing you wake up is reading his word. The third thing you do to keep poor is your heart. So you're keeping your temple, your mind, and your heart pure as you live in eager expectation of Jesus. The Bible tells us to guard your heart above all else because it determines where your life goes. The things that you put into your mind eventually dwell on your heart. So what you feed into your mind is going to feed into your heart. So when you feed the word of God into your mind, you are able to keep your heart pure. So we live in eager expectation by doing the things that we want Christ to see when he shows up. Amen? So you tell me, I tell you all the stuff that you need to do to live in eager expectation of God. I want to tell you that there is a blessing from when we remain in Christ. Many blessings is poured out upon us when we remain in Christ Jesus. The first blessing that we are at is that we will be fruitful. John 15 verses 4 to 5 talk about a picture of bearing fruit. These bearing fruit is the fruit of the spirit. It covers us and allows us to live the life of a spirit-driven person. You know, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, and all of that stuff pour out upon us. So we be fruitful when we remain in Christ. We develop this character that makes us strong, human. None of these fruit of the Spirit can grow in you through your own effort. It only can grow in you through Jesus Christ. Only Christ Jesus can provide you with all you need to grow the fruit it's in the Spirit. When we remain in Christ Jesus, the blessing that we receive is to be fruitful into our life. We also are blessed with the abundance of answer prayer. Many times our prayers are not answered because we don't remain in Christ Jesus. We only show up for him when we need something for him. But the Bible tells us in John 15 verses 7, it said, but if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted to you if you remain in me. And my words remain in you. The blessing and abundance of answer prayers come when we remain in Christ Jesus. Another blessing that we receive automatically when we remain in Jesus is that we are of the fellowship with God. Now, not everybody has the power to fellowship with God. As Christ said, it does with a pure heart. We'll see God. But John 14 verses 23 tell us, Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. And my father will love them. And we will come with each of them. We will come in to each of them and make our home. The final thing that we aim from all of this is that we will have confidence in the last day. We must know that God promises always kept. So if we study he's coming soon, he's coming soon. But how confident will you be in the timing of how much you remain in Christ Jesus? If you are just a believer or a Christian, then you have to evaluate. How will you be confident when Christ returns? First John 2 verses 28 said, And now, dear children, Remain in fellowship with Christ so that when he returns, you will be full of courage and not shrink back from him in shame. Know that if you don't remain in Christ, there's a obstacle waiting for you. Your life will be destroyed. How do I know that? Because the Bible tells us, it said, anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and wither. Such branch I gather together in a pile and burn. So if you don't remain in Christ Jesus, your life is meaningless and you will be cut off from the blessing that he has in store for you. That's 
the word I have for you today. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you receive a peace in your heart. And be willing to remain in Christ so you will be fruitful. So your prayer will be answered. So you will have a pure heart. And so you can stand before God in confidence with your head held high. Remain in Christ Jesus because he's the best thing for you to do for your life. I thank you for listening to our message this morning. And before I pray, I'll close in prayer. I would like to invite anyone out there today who is not a part of the family of faith, who is not a believer, a Christian, or a disciple. Any stage in that level that you are, I want to invite you today to text save to the number on the screen. Because when you text save, I will pray for you. And I will help to guide you through your process. When you take safe to that number, we will also provide you with a prayer of salvation that you can pray. The prayer of salvation is what you pray to say, I no longer belong to this world. I belong to Christ Jesus. This second Sunday of invite of Advent, I want you to invite you to be like Christ. If you would like to be like Christ, then text save to that number. Don't hold back because no one is promised today. Don't hold back because you don't know when Christ is going to return. And when he come back, you want to be prepared for him. So your first step in order for you to be like Christ is the first. You have to accept him into your life as your personal savior. So if I'm inviting you today to search your heart for the truth, you have heard the message from God today. What you do with that message will show how much you are willing to follow Christ. So take safe to that number if you would like to be a part of Christ's family. And if you have already been saved but want to move up to a next level, from being a believer to a Christian, or from being a Christian to a disciple, also take safe to that number. So I can pray for you and allow the Holy Spirit to move you through those levels. Because it's only through the work of God that you become transformed into an image of his son. I can't transform you, but God can. But I can pray for you and provide you with the tools and resources that you need to take those steps. So again, take safe to that number regardless of what level you are. I am praying that the message of God touch your heart today. And we'll invite you to join me back again at 5 p.m. for another prayer from the word of God. So now let us call to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word that you have given to us today. We thank you for every soul that was watching and listening today. We ask that whatever struggle they're going through their life, that they will receive a message of changes they can do to allow their prayers to be answered. And that their relationship with you will be changed for a better and greater level. I pray in the name of Jesus that whatever level they are today, that they will receive you as a new beginning. To end this year with a different level than what they were before. I don't believe you. A Christian or a disciple. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the power of your Holy Spirit will touch every soul that is listening to your message today. That they will not hold in their heart, but be open and willing to make a change in their life so that they can become one with Jesus Christ. I pray, oh Father God, by the power of your Son, Jesus Christ, that you will teach us, that you will motivate us, and that you will guide us how to be more like your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we want to surrender to you. We no longer want to live for ourselves. We want to live for you. So teach us how to do that, Lord. Teach us how to completely surrender ourselves to you. So that you can transform us in the image of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, you have already created us to be in your image. You have already made us wonderful you have already created us to be exactly what you want us to be. But now we are willing to surrender ourselves so you can transform us to be more like your son, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you will touch the heart of those who are listening today and that your words will not fall in deaf ears, but they will take action to make a difference in their life. We bring honor and glory to the name of your son, Jesus Christ. May his name be praised. 
and honor. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. If you're a member for church, and I'm going to invite you to join us after in our Zoom for our holy communion and networking gathering. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. May the love of Christ Jesus dwell inside of you. May the power of the Holy Spirit set a fire in you. And may the peace of God that surpass all understanding be with you today. God bless you and thank you for joining us today. Have a wonderful and blessed Sunday. Amen.